Well, Governor, there's a lot in the news right now, and you were very outspoken last night in, in attacking President Obama. What's interesting uh, is that Chuck Schumer is agreeing with you uh, that this was a horrible snub at the U.N. Well, this is not about Democrats, Republicans, left, right. This is about right and wrong. This is about evil good. This is such a clear-cut issue. And I am just beyond in, in a seething rage over what this administration has done in its last days. I mean, have some just common decency. If you're going to do this, do it up front. But to do it in such a cowardly way, just as you're leaving office, basically to say to the world, here's one more for you. Good luck with it. Look. I had a speech teacher in high school that said silence is agreement. Yesterday, the U.S. had an, abs uh, an abstained vote. That's silence. And that is agreeing with the idiotic, dangerous, and disturbing position that the U.N. took based on a resolution from four nations. It basically says to Israel, you don't deserve to be a nation that has secure borders and has any security. Mm. This is incredible. And, and, you know, I, I will not use terms like settlements because that, that conjures up this picture that the Israelis are throwing tents in somebody else's yard. That's not true. Mm -hmm. They're building neighborhoods in Judea and Samaria for the growing number of people who are coming there. And they're doing it in the territory that was given to them by the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and has been their homeland for 4,000 years. Now, Governor, I put on Twitter that you were going to be coming on the show. Matthew Dowd of ABC News was saying we should put this in the right context, which is that uh, previous presidents of both parties, as you know, uh, have had longstanding U.S. policy, which is true, about reining in settlements. I mean, I'm looking at a story from 2008. I was on a trip with th then President George W. Bush, where he was also pressuring Israel on the settlements issue. But what the critics seem to be missing is uh, that it's also a longstanding U.S. policy to go before the U.N. Security Council and shield Israel against these kinds of attacks. And that's where President Obama, it seems to me, flipped U.S. policy. Well, two things to, to, to note. First of all, the policy we've had is boneheaded. It's a ridiculous policy that we don't apply to any other nation on earth to tell them that if someone attacks you and you attack back and defend your country and you end up getting more land, that you're supposed to give that up and let your enemies get even closer to you. You know, that, that's absurd. The two-state solution is no solution. It's never going to work. And, and I know it's been our policy, but it's a foolish policy. It's feckless and it's dangerous. And the f fact is the Palestinians have no intention of ever coming to a peace accord. Remember in 1995 when Ehud Barak was willing to basically give up 95% of the Israeli land and Arafat rejected it? Why? Because they don't want peace. The, the, the Palestinians mm. started as a terrorist organization in the early 60s. Jerusalem has never been the capital of any country except for the Jews in Israel. It's never been a Palestinian capital, ever. When people talk about it, it's like they're ignorant. Look, I've been going to Israel for 43 years. I go many times a year. I'll be there a week from tomorrow. I, I'm not speaking about something I've read about. I, I, I've visited these places. And when, when people talk about apartheid, they're, they're talking out of insanity. They have no idea what they're talking about. And the Israelis have provided jobs. They've provided safe haven. They provide hospital care. Uh, let, me, let me just remind you this. There are Arabs who are in the Israeli Knesset. Can you tell me how many Jews helped govern Saudi Arabia or Yemen or the Emirates?